Hi friends, welcome to the Share Invite channel. My name is Judy. The message for today is about the letter that Paul wrote to the Galatian churches. We don't have a specific name, uh, but this was a circular letter that would go from one church to the next. Um, Paul uh, wrote this from Ephesus. Um, he stayed in Ephesus for two years. Uh, he wrote uh, 1 Corinthians to the Corinthian church to help them deal with their problems. And then he heard about some of the problems that the Judaizers uh, were uh, causing in these Galatian churches. Um, so on our map, you see that uh, Paul and his companions went from um, uh, Antioch, Syria, up through some of these churches that he had been before, and at Lystra, he began to go through these churches in the Galatian region, and then on to Ephesus, right there. So that is uh, where we think that uh, uh, these churches were, and uh, scholars debate whether this happened on his first um missionary journey, which would put it at an earlier date, um, and it's called the North uh, Galatian Theory. And then other scholars uh, that I uh, uh, agree with, uh, Paul uh, wrote the letter anywhere from 47 to 50, I'm sorry, 55 to 57 AD. It's called the South Galatian Theory on his third missionary journey. And, and I I lean towards that view because in chapter 4, verse 14, Paul said, But you know that it was because of bodily illness that I preached the gospel to you the first time. So if Paul had been there uh, earlier, then uh, this had to be later, maybe the, the third missionary journey. I, I really don't care. But... Uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll choose the third missionary journey. Well, what was the problem that uh, Paul saw in the Galatian churches? Well, Judaizers from, the, from Jerusalem had traveled there, and they were trying to uh, cause the believers to become Jews, uh, to circumcise themselves, and to follow the customs and the traditions of the Jews. Now, if you were if you were a Judaizer, why would you want to oppose Paul and turn the Galatians into Jews and submit to circumcision? Why bother? Well, let's think about the purpose of circumcision. It was very important to the Jews. It was a sign of a covenant with God to Abraham and his descendants. Well, what was the purpose of this covenant to Israel? Well, a covenant is a binding agreement. God pledged his love and his blessings upon Israel, uh, but um, they had the responsibility to obey, and if they didn't, God could punish. That was the curse. All Jews were circumcised, even Jesus. So Paul's discouragement of circumcision for believers in Christ, put him in the category of false teacher. Judaizers were probably Pharisees because they were experts on the law, and they believed salvation came by the law. Perhaps the Pharisees would be valued more in the Sanhedrin if they brought more pros proselytes into Judaism. Also, the Sadducees were from the wealthy class of Jews and the priestly Jews. I don't think that the Sadducees would want to travel away from Jerusalem and the temple just to follow Paul. Well, what would change a person's decision to follow the Judaizers instead of Paul? Well, manipulation of uh, facts and emotions would work. Um, Jesus was a Jew and he was circumcised. Paul was circumcised. All the prophets were circumcised. Why? Because God commanded it in uh, Genesis 17.10. Of course, you're not given the rest of the story, but, you know, you just take parts of it. 
Secondly, uh, uh, a thing that you can do is to cast doubt about Paul in the minds of the Galatians. They said that Paul was not a this apostle because he was not with Christ and the 12 apostles. Uh, Paul persecuted the church, therefore he couldn't be trusted. Paul was a Pharisee and he bragged about it in first chapter, verse 14. Paul said, I was advancing beyond many of my contemporaries among my countrymen, being more extremely jealous for my ancestral traditions. He probably wanted to be a high priest. But Paul didn't follow the ancestral traditions. Those like eating with uh, Gentiles or not demanding the Gentiles to uh, be circumcised. Therefore, Paul was a hypocrite, not worthy of the uh, teachings of the law. Well, how did Paul defend himself? Well, Paul defended his apostleship by his encounter with Jesus Christ on the Damascus Road. Secondly, Paul was accepted as an apostle by the uh, an apostle to the Gentiles by the three pillars of the Jerusalem church, uh, James, who was the Lord's brother and the pastor of the church, Peter and John, who were disciples uh, following Jesus. Third, Paul said that he was not lying to the Corinthians, but rather telling them the truth. Well, how did Paul describe the Judaizers? Well, he said they're false teachers. They're like leaven. Leaven is always seen in a negative evil light that it spreads uh, through the entire dough and uh, therefore those false teachings would spread throughout the entire church. Paul said, uh, let the Judaizers mutilate themselves uh, and many people, especially, um, especially pagans or Gentiles, believe that circumcision was mutilation. Uh, the fourth thing Paul did in describing the uh, Judaizers, what say, he said that they were under the law of the flesh. And their way of life consisted of, here's the long list, immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, 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 Drunkenness, carousing. Did Paul leave anything out? Uh, but Paul said the Judaizers don't keep the law themselves. Why are they trying to dump it on you? And Paul said they distort the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said that since the Judaizers are presenting a different, a different gospel, they are to be accursed. They're under a curse, the curse of the law. The Judaizers uh, bewitched the Galatians, and Paul said twice that the Galatians were foolish to believe the Judaizers over the true gospel of Christ. Now, I believe that the theme of, of Galatians is that salvation is based on faith in Jesus Christ, not based on the law of Moses. Paul used the word faith 17 times in this letter. He used the word law 25 times. Also, circumcision, which is part of the law, he used 13 times. Well, what does Paul say about faith for the Galatians? He said we're justified, we're made right, we are saved through faith in Christ. Most of uh, That's in chapter 2.16. The life Paul now lives is by faith in Jesus Christ, who loved him and gave himself up for him. That's in uh, the second chapter, verse 20. And then all the next ones are in the third chapter. Verse 2, you receive the Holy Spirit by faith and not by the law. Verse 5, the Holy Spirit works miracles among them by faith. Verse 7, believers who have their faith in Christ are sons of Abraham. Verse 7. Verse 9, God justifies the Gentiles by faith, and they are blessed along with Abraham. And then in verse 11, Paul said the righteous man lives by faith, not by the law. Uh, 
Paul said, the law is not of faith. It's flat out not of faith. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, in verse 13. In Christ, the blessing of Abraham comes to the Gentiles. That's in verse 14. Believers in Christ receive the promise of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, through faith. That's in verse 14. The promise of an inheritance with God is given to those who believe in Christ by faith. Verse 22. And then verse 24, we're justified by faith. He's made right. And the law is the tutor that leads us to Christ. Verse 25, faith in Christ releases us from this tutor. And verse 26, we are the sons of God through faith in Christ. Pretty powerful uh, chapter 3 in Galatians. Well, what's the purpose of God giving the law in the first place? Well, it was to lead the Jews to Christ in verse 24 of chapter 3. The law showed God's people the promises of the coming Messiah. The law showed that no one could follow all of the law. The law showed how sinful mankind is. What are some of the other things that, that Paul said about the law? Well, he said that if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law in chapter 518. Um, he said in the third chapter, verse 17, that the law was given 430 years after Abraham. So it's not the avenue of salvation. Abraham was saved by faith, not by the law because it hadn't been given yet. God granted to Abraham, God made a promise. He granted to Abraham inheritance due to his faith in God's covenant, binding covenant. Um, those who belong to Christ are descendants of Abraham and have the same promise of inheritance, which is to be a son of God. In verse 29 of chapter 3. The works of the law are under a curse. Chapter 3.10. No one is justified by the law. Verse 11. The law is not of faith. Verse 12. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Verse 13. Freedom from the law uh, breaks down barriers between races. He says there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Few or Greek. It breaks down barriers between social classes. Uh, there is uh, no barrier between slave and freedmen. It breaks down barriers between males and females. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Chapter 3, verse 28. Um, in chapter 4, verse 5, Christ uh, came to redeem those under the law to receive adoption. Now, how close, this is an interesting question, how close were the Galatians to apostasy? Now, some would say, well, they committed apostasy. Uh, they deserted Christ for a different gospel. Chapter 1, verse 6. Paul said they turned their back to the weak and worthless elemental things, which enslaves them again, chapter 4, verse 9. And those who wanted to be justified by the law have fallen from grace, chapter 5, verse 4. Fallen from grace. Hmm. Those who do not walk by the Holy Spirit carry out the desires of the flesh. The flesh is against the Holy Spirit. And then Paul listed those deeds of the flesh, the immorality, and that whole uh, that whole uh, list of uh, things. Those who practice the deeds of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. Chapter five, sixteen to twenty one. Others say that Galatian, the Galatians did not commit apostasy; they were backsliding, and they needed clarification on the two methods of justification the law method, and the faith method. Those who want the law method, who were the Judaizers, cut ties with Christ and fall away from the faith method to the law method. Well, you choose.
Well, what is the rest of the story, uh, the entire story about circumcision? Uh, I think of Paul Harvey and his famous line was, what's the rest of the story? Um, the rest of the story about circumcision. Moses said that circumcision was a sign of the covenant relationship between God and Abraham. All right, we know that. Next, later in Deuteronomy 10, 16, Moses said uh, to the people to circumcise their hearts. And then in chapter 30, verse 6 of Deuteronomy, Moses writes that God circumcised Israel's heart. Jeremiah said in chapter 4, 4, that the Lord said for the Israelites to circumcise the foreskins of their heart. In Romans 2, 29, Paul talked about the circumcision of the heart. Galatians 5, 2 and 11, Paul stated that there is no benefit to circumcision. In Philippians 3, 3, Paul said that believers in Jesus are the true circumcision. In Titus 1.10, those of the circumcision, who were the Judaizers, are rebellious and deceivers. So before Christ came, circumcision was a symbol of a covenant relationship with God. But after Christ, the covenant relationship is based on faith in Christ. He rescued us from the present evil age among, according to God's will. Chapter 1, verse 4. Well, Paul made a huge contrast in, by the fruit of the Spirit and the fruit of the flesh. We've talked about the fruit of the flesh, uh, but um, the fruit of the Spirit, uh, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. And this is uh, pretty much in a, um, a vertical relationship between God and us. We can have love, we can have joy, we can have peace because God's in us. Patience, kindness, goodness. Uh, these are sort of like a horizontal relationship. We can have those with other people because we have the love, joy, and peace. So we have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Fruit of the Spirit. Now, um, I have a final word, not a summary, but a final word about chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. God is not deceived by the Judaizers. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, if you follow the law, this he will also reap. You're judged by the law. For the one who sows to his own flesh, the fruit of the flesh, will from the flesh reap corruption. Corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And that talks about the fruit of the Spirit uh, demonstrating eternal life. Now, I have a summary of this short letter that Paul wrote to the Galatian churches. First, Abraham was justified. He was saved by faith in God 430 years before the law was given uh, by uh, Moses. The law pointed to the coming Messiah, who was Jesus Christ. The law identified sin, and no one could attain following that law. Sin was uh, too egregious, and uh, mankind was uh, full of sin and needed a Savior. The New Testament covenant is Christ and his atonement, his payment for our sins. Because our belief in Christ, we become uh, sons and heirs to God's kingdom. The Judaizers from Jerusalem were causing conflict in the Galatian churches, telling them that they should become Jewish Christians by submitting to circumcision and following the law of Moses and observe all the Jewish traditions and festivals. Paul confronted these false teachers and reminded the Galatians that justification or salvation comes through faith in Christ. This faith in Christ makes us sons of Abraham, and we receive eternal life with God. Circumcision is no longer needed. It was a symbol of a covenant relationship between God and Abraham. But Jesus Christ brought a covenant relationship with God based on faith. I hope that you share this with someone who needs uh, a word um, of encouragement if they're 
So thinking about uh, leaving the faith, uh, I uh, hope that you uh, share and uh, I hope that you find a Bible-believing church where you hear about Jesus, who he was, who he is today, who he will be coming uh, as the, the, uh, the second coming, as the Messiah, and that you can join a Bible small group where you can uh, grow in your faith and learn, learn along with other, uh, other believers. Thanks for watching. Oh, um, after Paul wrote these churches in Galatia, he had already written the First Corinthians letter. He, he traveled to Philippi waiting for an answer from the Corinth church. And when he got that answer, he sent off a second letter and had Timothy, uh, uh, Timothy deliver that letter. And then by the time he traveled the entire distance to Corinth, their problems had been solved. And, and Paul stays in Corinth for a period of time, and there he writes his letter to the Romans. Um, and so that will be our next topic, the Book of Romans. Thanks for watching.